Okay, my name is Cameron Allen. I'm a uh, firefighter for the uh, City of Okoye. I'm a firefighter paramedic. I've been working for the City of Okoye for um, going on about six, going on seven years now. Um, within that time, I became a staff air pack tech. And the reason I'm putting on this class today is to inform you guys of um, how to do a proper inspection of, the, of, of your air pack uh, during, uh, at the beginning of every day, day of shift. Uh, along with that, we're going to go in and also show you guys the, the, one of the methods of, way of donning your, your air pack using the overhead method. Um, this uh, is going to get a little bit more in depth into the pack because I, I, my, my way of being an air pack tech, I figure if you're going to if you're going to inspect this gear, you need to know what everything is. You need to know where it's at. You need to know what what it's called, what they do, and and all of that uh, all of these specs about the, the air pack that you're going to use. So um, as we go through, if there's any questions, you guys can stop me, you can uh, raise your hand, um, holler out, do whatever you need to do to get my attention, because uh, we're going to go through this in a, uh, in a timely manner, we'll probably be done in about 30 minutes, and uh, if anybody needs to use any potty breaks or anything like that, you can go and do that as well. Uh, a couple little visual aids I put up here on the board for you guys, um, this is pretty much what the pack looks like, I have one up at the front desk for you. I also have, uh, this one breaks it down, shows you all the different components that I'm, kind of, that I'm going to go over today. There's a few of them that I don't have that are a little bit different than our pack compared to the ones that I, I found. Uh, showing you what the heads up display, like I'll explain later on. And then also you'll show your shoulder harness. So a few little things I'll go over, uh, and we'll start with the, the basic of the, the entire pack. Um, starting off with the bottle. All of our bottles that we carry uh, here at the Oak Fire Department are um, carbon fiber uh, uh, woven bottles. Uh, all of our bottles are 4,500 psi bottles. They hold about 45 minutes of air. Um, typically, that's that's for a, a standard person sitting in a chair, kicking back, uh, watching TV, and just breathing normal air. Uh, as soon as you put this on a person's back, that's going to go into a fire and, and work for. Uh, you know, put a lot of uh, exhausting and good, exhausting themselves into a fire. You're probably going to get about 30, maybe 35 minutes if they, depending on how the person breathes. So you can't guarantee you're going to get 45 minutes of air out of here. But uh, it's the, it's just uh, what, what what it's been rated for. All of these bottles uh, um, will have some of the bottle that as you go on they get scratches, they get scuffs, but uh, the bottles are still fine. They're still intact. Every year, every uh, uh, five years, these bottles get hydrostatic tested. Um, they, they come to the manufacturer's one that's written right on the bottle, and after every uh, every five years, they go back and they get retested again, they get re-stamped, and a new uh, new a stamp is put on the bottle. All the bottles have a gauge on them. The gauge reaches all the way from full, which is 4,500 psi, and works its way all the way down. Uh, you get your standard uh, metal threads on this end, and you're open, and you're, you're about to open the bottle. These bottles have, they have a lock mechanism on, so that when you need to so if you're just sitting on the sand and you lean, you won't actually open your bottle or shut your bottle off. You actually need to push in the device and then rotate it to, to get the air um, flowing into the system. So, moving on to the pack. The pack has a lot of uh, in-depth pieces, um, starting off with the regular frame of the pack. The frame of the pack is an aluminum uh, base pack. It's pretty lightweight. It's not the lightest weight pack that they make, that Scott makes. But it actually works out really good. It's durable and it lasts really long. Um, for our department, this is what we chose to go with. Uh, so you may see all different configurations of packs out there. Um, but this is the standard look of them. This is a Scott's 4500, uh, which tells you that it's rated for the 4500 psi bottles. They also have a Scott's 22, 2.2 bottle uh, uh, configuration. Um, but we carry the 4500 at this department. So basically, we're going to start off with one. With one side of the strap, we're going to work our way all the way around to the next strap, down along the entire pack, explaining every little piece. And like I said, the reason to do this is that you, you should be very, um, you should be have lots of knowledge about this pack before you do it, because this is your life safety inside of a inside of an ideal age situation. So over your right shoulder, you're always going to have your shoulder uh, gauge. Uh, on your shoulder gauge, you have a. a you have two different buttons, but you got a couple of different indicators for you. Uh, first off is your gauge. Your gauge has a glow-in-the-dark background gauge that you can utilize. Uh, of course, 
in, in, you can look over your shoulder at, in, in any dark situation and still be able to see uh, how much air you have. The air, the gauge that's on here should match with 100 PSI of your bottle. Okay, how are you going to ask, how are you going to be able to tell what your bottle reads versus this? That's what you're going to check in the form. You're going to make sure they're within 100 PSI. If they're not, you're going to notify your detective. You're going to go ahead and take this pack out of service, let them know that they need to get that adjusted um, and get that fixed. So, like I said, that's going to be your shoulder gauge. That's going to show you what, what, uh, how much air is in your bottle once you pressurize the system. Um, along the top here, you have uh, five different lights. You have two red, one green, and two more red. These lights indicate uh, for your pass device system. Uh, your pass device system is a, is, is a motion sensor system that helps you in case of an emergency. If something were to happen inside of the fire, you can, if you're motionless for over, uh, for roughly 10 seconds, your system will start to activate, and from there it keeps going up and gets louder until it fully activates and screams bloody murder, which you guys will get to hear shortly. Uh, these lights alternate, the, the, the two on this side and two on this side, they alternate back and forth for about uh, three to four seconds and then they, they go on to the next stage and stage. There's one green light in the center, that green light tells you that, there is, that your past device battery is good. The way you check that every morning is you push your, your yellow uh, reset button one time and as you see, the green light blinks. If the green light blinks, that means your battery is good. You're good to go, nothing else you need to be concerned about. If that green light does not blink, that does not mean you're allowed to change the battery. You cannot do anything to the system besides change the bottle. If anything needs to be changed, any battery needs to be done, you need to notify your air tech or tell your lieutenant to have this bottle taken out of service. The other two bottles, which is one which I just went over, was your reset. That reset is to check the battery and reset your pass device when it goes off and completely shut your system down. So it has three different functions that it can do. Um, through there, uh, I'll, I'll go over those more in detail as we get along through there. This one, right, the red right here, of course, red is for your emergency. You can manually set your system off and it, in case of something were to happen rather than have to try to sit still or if you move. You need somebody to come save you if you're trapped. You push this for uh, two seconds and the system activates. Um, if you were to accidentally hit that and push it for two seconds, you can to reset it by hitting this and, and reset your, your path to Coming across the shoulder harness, you have two different uh, braided uh, hoses here. One of them is a high pressure. The way you can tell it's high pressure is because it's a hard, non-flexible hose. The other one is a real flimsy. And uh, what that is inside this, this is just electronic wires. That, that activate the, uh, that utilize for the lights, okay? Those wires move up the shoulder, they go over here, and they go into your pressure reducer. Your pressure reducer does exactly that. It reduces the air from 4,500 pounds of air to breathable air. Um, I'll go back into a little bit more detail on that, but we'll work our way back up to the other shoulder strap. On the other shoulder strap, you notice here right away, the first thing you see is a flexible hose. What does that mean? That's your breathable air. Anytime you have a flexible hose on your system, it's either breathable air, or of course this one is the little wires. But this is breathable air, it's not on a high pressure line, if something were to happen and this were to get cut, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't be as traumatic as you break in a high pressure line. So, high pressure comes into the system, comes out of here on a low pressure side, into your regulator. Going a little bit over the regulator, regulator is a uh, device that is, that that it has a baffle inside that turns around and allows you to, to be able to breathe in the air and then exhale and not, not uh, and exhale out any air but not get any contaminants in, inside your mouth or inside your lungs. Um, on the regulator, you have a couple, same thing you do everywhere else, you have a couple different buttons that do things and you have some lights that indicate certain things. Um, first thing we'll go over is your purge valve. If anything were to happen inside the system, you have a bath and you go to take a breath and nothing happens. Something happens at the diaphragm inside and it's not working. You can always purge, which is open the valve, take a deep breath, and shut the valve. It will bypass the uh, baffle, the, 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 uh, the diaphragm instead, and allow you to breathe the air without, without getting any kind of straight in and push the air out if something were to happen. That's also a way to uh, relieve any of the air pressure when you're done with your firefighter or anytime you're using the, the, the device. You can release all the air out of the system and then reset your system back to uh, inactive. On top, you have what they call a don doff switch. The don doff switch is exactly that when you're going to don this device or you're going to off it. So when you
you take a deep breath, the diaphragm pulls in, this button activates it, and it pops open, and now you're able to breathe air. So air will free flow as long as your mask is sealed to your face. If your mask is sealed to your face, it will not free flow. It's a pressurized system. So when you take a breath, the diaphragm opens, pushes air into your lungs, and then you exhale out and it goes through there. If you were to pull this off of your mask, this will free flow until you reset that diaphragm away from there. So you always want to make sure before you take your device off your mask, your face piece, you push this button. Okay? You always want to do that before, also during your inspection. Before you turn your bottom on, you want to make sure you push this because 90% of the people that check their air packs in the morning, they don't tend to push this thing, and the first thing you do is turn it on and psh, air flow, and they waste a good you know, 100 pounds. Other things you should lock, lock those on there. You always want to make sure you remember where that's at. It should be near your thumb, because if you don't push that button, you keep cramming and cramming, next thing you know, you break that little piece of plastic off, and then I have to take it out of service and repair it. You know, the more important things. This right here is called your HUV HUD display, heads up display. That was the picture that I showed before with some of the lights. You're going to get to see that here in a few minutes. The lights, the way the lights work is you have a total of uh, five lights on here. You have two green, one amber, and one red rectangles. And on this far side over here, you're going to have one small circle red light. What these lights do is when you're in, a, in an environment where you're wearing your mask, you have a visual aid to be able to tell you how much air is roughly in your bottle. The way that works through Scott's is um, two green lights. Two green lights is full. Anywhere between full and one green light, which is uh, 4,500 PSI all the way down to um, 3,375. At 3,375, the one green light will go off and you only have one light left on there. But that one green light means, okay, I'm at, I'm at three quarters of a bottle. I can keep going. Next thing you know, you breathe down, you hit 2,250. 2,250 pounds of left inside this bottle, you're going to get a slow flashing amber light. That slow flashing amber light is again is another indication. I'm halfway down. When it reaches the single red light, you're going to get a slow flash at first, probably for about no, three or four breaths. And then after those breaths, then your vibe alert is going to kick on. Your vibe alert is a, is a device that's built into here to where if you can't hear so much is going on, maybe your lights go work and you got drywall crammed in here and you can't see, you'll know that you're, you're getting low on air. You're down to the last quarter bottle, quarter amount of bottle of your air that you have, which is 11.25. When that happens, you definitely need to exit the building no matter what you're doing or where you're at. You notify your buddies that you're, you're, you're low on air and you need to get out. Um, from there, the other little red light that I'm talking about is your battery indication light. It's a real small circle where it's on this corner. When that light comes on, the only time you should see that light is in the morning when you turn your back on to do your inspection that we're going over. You'll see that light come on, it'll stay on, and then when they all reset and you're too green, that red light should go off. If that red light does not go off, guess what? Notify your lieutenant, tell me you need to get your battery changed, the pack comes out of service, and you get another one. If you have an air pack tech that's on your shift, they can normally switch that out within a few minutes, okay? So it's not a critical failure. If something happens when you're out of, out of fire, it doesn't mean you can't go in and, and do what you need to do, it just knows that your heads up display may not work at that time. So, a lot of critical points here. If anybody's got any questions about these, a lot of, you know, knowing your air pressure is in there. If you got any questions, um, raise your hand or ask any questions. If not, we'll keep moving on to the rest of the system. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, I tend to ramble a little fast, so if, 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 I, if I catch up, guards, slow me up and tell me, hey, um, I, didn't, I didn't get what you were saying there. So, we just covered the two shoulder straps. Those are everything that's in the front, everything behind you. You're pretty much not really going to know much about why you're wearing your pack is your uh, pressure reducer. Um, coming from a user side, there's not really much you need to know except that this does exactly what I said before. It reduces high pressure air into low breathable air. You look into the system, you come down, you see this one hard arm. You definitely know that that's a high, high pressure because it's really hard, it's really stiff. This one over here is really flimsy, so that must be low, right? You know that this comes from the bottom up into here, goes through a bunch of valves and chambers, reduces it down to a breathable air, and comes out of the two other ports. Um, from there, like I said, this hard, uh, hard section line here that you can't pinch your clothes off, this connects into your bottle. Things you want to check after, uh, that you should check before ever changing your bottles, is look inside here and make sure that your lower hand is over. There's a little clearish white colored over inside here. You want to check that and make sure it's there, because if not, you will um, 
continue, continuously leak out here, and you won't get a good seal on your bottom. Uh, down here, this is what you call a RIC UF connection. This RIC UF connection is, is something that, that is universal across the um, across the United States, across the world, that, that, that tells you for any type of RIT team activation or any time you have any type of 